when you did your interview with Sarah Palin, I thought more people would praise you. I think that was one of the single best interviews I've ever seen anywhere. Sarah Palin. I, when I watch that thing, and I've watched it probably 50 times, to me it's a lesson on how to interview someone. Well, I, you know, actually that interview did get a lot of praise and support. I think that later when she talked about it publicly, um, it was more criticized. But when, initially when it, when it aired, Howard, it got, um, I didn't get much criticism, criticism at all, even from Republicans. I think most people thought it was incredibly fair and uh, that I didn't sandbag her, that the questions were not gotcha questions. They were they basically weren't. questions in my mind that required accumulated knowledge and, abil and an ability to be a critical thinker. When you prepared to interview Sarah Palin, did you go in with the attitude that this is not a bright woman? No, you know, what I, well, I went in with the attitude as that that there was a lot that was not known about her, how she would govern, right. what her opinion was on certain policy issues, how she felt. I mean, she had just gone to the UN and met with all these world leaders. I wanted to know her take on foreign policy issues, I on think Iran, she nuclear weapons. I mean, I, I really, really approached it as I would have approached any political candidate who was not that well known. Do you know you have gold or do you were you shocked by the reaction? You know, I thought that people who did not like her, did not support her would would feel that even more strongly that right. they would dislike her more and I thought that people who supported her would basically blame me for the questions I asked and excuse anything that she did during the course of that interview. So I thought it would basically make people more entrenched. And is that the way it played out? No. How well, did I, anyone vote for her after well, that? Well, I think what uh, happened was there was this sort of swath of undecided voters, kind of more moderate voters, who were really on the fence. And if you remember at that moment in time during the campaign, uh, the trajectory for Obama was kind of flatlining a little bit. And That's Sarah right. Palin had given this riveting, I mean, she did an incredible job at the convention because she was like a, a politician, the likes of which nobody had ever seen before. She it was, was an amazing performance. Right? Yeah. I mean, she was so accessible and funny and, um, you know, she was an incredibly appealing candidate. So do you think you were, I'm not going to say totally responsible, but somewhat responsible for Obama winning? <laughs> no, I, mean, I would. I, I would say that that I think for this as this broad swath of undecided voters, I think they saw this interview. They thought, "Gee, this is the person who's going to be a heartbeat away from the presidency." So I think it really gave people pause, and they thought, mm. "Yeah, I think yeah. it changed a lot of people's opinion." When I saw the answer to the periodicals, you know what's so interesting? That whole question about what do you read—that was kind of an afterthought for me because that was at the end of our second interview. We it had was done a one ridiculous, in, easy. We had done snuff. one interview in New York, and then we did a second one in Ohio after a campaign appearance. And I was curious because when anyone is so extreme in their political ideology, I'm always curious, like. What made them that way? What shaped them? What did they have a formative experience? Was it their right. parents? What What do they read that kind of helps reinforce that on a daily basis? It was a throwaway. Yeah. It was like, hey, what do you read when you wake up in the morning? It was, it was, I think she was so aggravated with me by that point that wow. she just was very defensive about it. And she said, you know, people in Alaska read. And I said, you know, I thought I wasn't suggesting that. But I thought it was interesting, and I wonder if she in her own mind has gone back and thought, gee, maybe I should have said I read every newspaper in Alaska because I'm governor of that state. Or I read Simple. every national newspaper, and, you know, Katie, I Google things. I mean, I don't know.